A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. From Miletus, Paul had presbyters of the church at Ephesus summoned. When they came to him, he addressed them, You know how I lived among you the whole time from the day I first came. You know how I lived among you the whole time from the day I first came to the province of Asia. I serve the Lord with all humility and with the tears and trials that came to me because of the plots of the Jews, and I did not at all shrink from telling you what was for your benefit or from teaching you in public or in your homes. I earnestly bore witness for both a Jews and Greeks to repentance before God and to faith in our Lord Jesus. But now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem. What will happen to me there, I do not know, except that in one city after another, the Holy Spirit has been warning me that imprisonment and hardships await me. Yet, I consider life of no importance to me, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus, to bear witness to the gospel of God's grace. But now, I know that none of you to whom I preach the kingdom during my travels will ever see my face again. And so I solemnly declare to you this day that I am not responsible for the blood of any of you, for I did not shrink from proclaiming to you the entire plan of God. Responsorial Psalm, Sing to God, O Kingdoms of the Earth. A bountiful rain you shower down, O God, upon your inheritance. You restore the land when it languished, your flock settled in it. In your goodness, O God, you provided it for the needy. Sing to God, O Kingdoms of the Earth. Blessed day by day be the Lord, who bears our burdens, God who is our salvation. God is a saving God for us. The Lord, my Lord, controls the passageways of death. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said these things, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may also glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. This is eternal life, that they should know you, the only true God, and Him whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I glorified you on the earth. I have accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world existed. I revealed your name to the people whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, and you have given them to me. They have kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatever you have given me are from you. For the words which you have given me, I have given to them, and they received them, and knew for sure that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I don't pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father.
today's gospel, Jesus' prayer is directed to the Father. Jesus speaks to the Father and acts as the intercessor, praying for all the believers. He did this before His Passion. While in our first reading, Paul continues his journey of bringing Christ to the world, facing with courage the oppositions of many, especially among the Jewish people. From the day of his conversion, Paul has been very committed to the mission given by Jesus to him. He served the Lord with deep commitment despite all the trials and persecutions. For him, there is nothing more important than living his life according to the gospel. In fact, he describes himself as prisoner in the Spirit for the sake of Christ. He said, Compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem. What will happen to me there, I do not know, except that in one city after another, the Holy Spirit has been warning me that imprisonment and hardships await me. So, Paul was fully aware that his future would not be so different from the future of his master. But Paul was ready to take whatever happens. He is sustained by the Spirit of God within him. Certainly, all of us will agree that if we live our Christian life seriously, we will face many challenges and difficulties, especially when it comes to living a life according to the gospel. And our first opponent will be ourselves. We have to overcome our ego because there are many instances wherein we protect so much our ego that prevents us to live according to the gospel. But one thing is sure, after overcoming our first opponent, which is our ego, there are still other hardships we encounter along the way. But God's grace will make us move forward towards where He wants us to be. Let us get inspired by the example of St. Paul, the great missionary ever. Prayer from praying.knowingjesus.com Heavenly Father, I love you and thank you for all that you have done for me. Thank you for dying for me and taking the punishment that I deserve. Help me, for when I am on my own, I want to tell the world about you. But when I am in company with other people, I just freeze up and get so tongue-tied that I am so lost for words. I feel I am letting you down by not saying anything about you and remaining silent when I should be lifting up the Lord Jesus and telling everyone I meet the message of salvation by the grace through faith. Give me courage, I pray, to open my mouth and speak the truth to whomsoever I may come into contact. Release my tongue and allow me to speak forth what is in my heart to your praise and glory. Lord, I know that without you I can do nothing, but I also believe that I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength and courage. 
Amen. Thank you.